All right, we've got somebody on the phone, 917 area code. If you want to ask a question, I'm going to unmute you. Hi, who's this? Hi, this is Andrew. Hey, Andrew. Ask away. How you run? Hey. So I wanted to get your take on what a rationally egoistic approach to empathy in this situation is. Um, personally, I've gone from religious altruism to objectivism, and that transition in philosophy has required me to substantially rework my empathy response. And I really had a long struggle with kind of feeling bad for other people's problems that weren't my fault. Now we have this situation um, with Corona and somebody on these issues kind of garner my attention for obvious reasons. And um, somebody on Twitter said something about Trump of how he has um, resentment towards people suffering. Like he sees it as weakness yeah. per se. And I agree with that observation. I think he is desensitized from his humanity. Um, and I think that trait is, 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 is shown in a lot of alt-right type people. Um, there are actual people in this situation, healthcare workers, for example, who I think it's good to identify with their struggle, not being able to see their kids for two weeks and that kind of thing. And it, it brings you in touch with your, your humanity. On the other side is I'm seeing a lot of these calls for kindness, kind of limitless kindness and compassion. I, you know, and maybe it's because I see this from the former religious altruism that I read too much into it, but some of it I think is guilt tripping. Yeah. And this kind of this attempt to limitlessly drain the positive energy of somebody for something that's not their fault. Yep. So I wanted to get your take on what you think is kind of a rational approach where you're still in touch with their humanity. But if you're being moral under objectivism, you can't exist in this permanent set state of sadness because you've got to survive and you've got and you want to be happy. So I just wanted to get your take on that. No, I, I think you've got it. I, I think you're absolutely right. So I think it's completely legitimate to, to feel empathy towards somebody who is suffering uh, of no fault of their own, whether it's just somebody who got the corona flu and is now is in, in a hospital bed and life is at stake. And I mean, that that's a legitimate reason to, to be, uh, you know, upset or, or saddened because there are a lot of people like that and they might be people you know, they might not be people, they might be people you don't know, but partially you don't know because there's so many of them right now. And uh, it's sad that people are going through this. Uh, certainly the healthcare professionals that are putting, uh, you know, uh, the, the effort on the line here and really exerting themselves and exhibiting real values and real, uh, you know, real pro-human life values of, of, of working hard to and being productive and saving somebody's life and values that we want them to have because our lives want, might one day be in their hands. So, uh, you know, we certainly want to, it should sympathize with their struggle. But there has to be a, a limit to that, right? It's them, us. So empathy doesn't mean you are them. It means you understand their plight. You understand their suffering. And I think it's legitimate to understand, to feel, but no, you can't let your feelings overwhelm you in, in any situation, right? You're not dominated by your feelings. So you have to recognize that people are suffering and that is sad and, and feel that, and yet still be able to use your mind and, and focus your attention and focus your mind on the things you need to do to improve your life, to survive in this mess and, and to guide your life towards a better outcome. So, uh, you know, I think being human means part of being human is to recognize uh, suffering that, that is not somebody's fault and, and, and the, the difficulties they're going through and to appreciate that. And at the same time, be able to fully orient oneself towards one's own life and towards one's own success and make sure that the one doesn't interfere with the other. Um, and, and uh, you know, feel enough and be aware enough of what's going on in the world to help you uh, deal with what you have to deal with in the world and to, 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 to make it possible for you 
to feel a part of the world, right? To, 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 to feel part of what is going on in the world. So it's, it's difficult. It's very easy in times like this. And I feel under myself because I, unfortunately I read the news a lot. Right. And I, and I, I don't watch television news. So that's a good thing that, that keeps me sane, I think, but I read a lot and it's depressing. And when you watch the market, do what the market does. And when, when you think your, your, your livelihood is dependent on, 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 on this crap and, and you think that like, like David was before, you think your livelihood is dependent on decisions made at City Hall in Austin or decisions made in City Hall in Chicago, one of the most corrupt places in the planet, right? And, and yet they are determining your business's fate. Everything, all the blood, sweat and tears and money and capital that you have put into it is now completely at the hands of some bureaucrat. So it's very difficult to stay positive, engaged, and focused on success in life when there are people suffering all around you, and to some extent, not for their own fault, but because of bad government, bad, you know, bad agency, and, and to stay sane through all of this. So, you know, I, I find it difficult, and, and I think a lot of people find it difficult. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think, meaning any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to iranbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com you're on book show and um and and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to keep this uh, to keep this going i'm not sure when the next